Vichari nai kane pano sad dharma samstapako Nanna shastra vichari nai kane pano unto the six Goswamis, namely Srila Rupa Goswami, Srila Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Srila Jiva Goswami and Sri Gopal Bhatta Goswami are all very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures with the aim of establishing eternal religious principles all over the three worlds. And thus they are taking, worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. We are reading Nectar of Devotion, chapter number 18, entitled Character of One in Ecstatic Love. Yesterday we heard the nine characteristics, the nine uh, characteristics of a person who has this ecstatic love for Krishna. And we read first about 
utilization of time. Today we're going to hear about perseverance. Perseverance, meaning that one does not give up very easily. You, have, you want to persevere. Sometimes things are difficult, but you don't give up. You keep going. That perseverance, that is a characteristic of one who has ecstatic love for Krishna. Right? So it is explained here, when a person is undisturbed, even, even in the presence of various causes of disturbance, he is called reserved and perseverant. An example of this perseverance and reservation is, is found in the behavior of King Parikshit, as described in the first canto, 19th chapter, verse 15 of Srimad Bhagavatam. The king says there that to all the sages present before him at the time of his death, my dear Brahmanas, you should always accept me as your surrendered servant. I have come to the bank of the Ganges just to devote my heart and soul unto the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So please bless me that Mother Ganges may also be pleased with me. Let the curse of the Brahmana's son fall upon me. I do not mind. I only request that at the last moment of my life, all of you will kindly chant the holy name of Vishnu, so that I may realize the transcendental qualities, so that I may real, realize His transcendental qualities. This example of Maharaj Pariksha's behavior, his remaining patient, even at the last point of his life, his undisturbed condition of mind is an example of reservation. This is one of the characteristics of a devotee who has developed ecstatic love for Krishna. So Maharaj Parikshit shows this quality that he had been cursed that he would die within seven days. He had committed a minor offence against a great Brahmana who was sitting in meditation. And the son of the Brahmana took great offence to Maharaj Parikshit's behaviour. So much so that the Brahmana's son cursed Maharaj Parikshit that he should die from the bite of a snake bird in seven days. But Maharaj Parikshit, when he heard of the curse, he accepted it and he went to the bank of the Ganges and he met the great sages and here we see the verse stated from Srimad Bhagavatam how he is requesting the sages. Just please, please help me to remember the Lord at the time of death. Help me by chanting the holy name of the Lord. That is, where's the Bhagavatam? You're still writing the verse? Oh. Okay, so we'll read a little more. The next quality, we, first of all we had utilization of time. The devotee is very careful not to waste any time. Then I just read about perseverance and reservation. The devotee is persevering, doesn't give up, he's steady, he keeps going. Very important. Sometimes we're very fruitive. We don't get what we want immediately, we give up. Sometimes people come, I want initiation today. <laughs> right? You know? No, sorry Prabhu. And then I'm going. Right? They give up. They're not very perseverant. So we have to be perseverant. Patience is one of the qualities required progress in Krishna Consciousness, right? Are you going to be perseverant? Yes? Good. 
Next quality, detachment. We should not be too much attached. We have to be detached. It is described. The senses are always desiring sense enjoyment. But when a devotee develops transcendental love for Krishna, his senses are no longer attracted by material desires. Right? When we actually have developed an attraction for Krishna, then the material desires don't trouble us anymore. We, we give them up. They're not, they're not attractive anymore. This, this state of mind is called detachment. There is a nice example of this detachment in connection with the character of King Bharat. In the fifth canto, 14th chapter, verse 13 of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated, Emperor Bharat was so attracted by the beauty of the lotus feet of Krishna, that even in his youthful life, he gave up all kinds of attachments to family, children, friends, kingdom, etc., as though they were untouchable stools. Emperor Bharat provides a typical example of detachment. He had everything enjoyable in the material world, but he left it. This means that detachment does not mean artificially keeping oneself aloof and apart from the allurements of attachment. Even in the presence of such allurements, if one can remain unattracted by material attachments, he is called detached. In the beginning, of course, a neophyte devotee must try to keep himself apart from all kinds of alluring attachments. But the real position of a mature devotee is that even in the presence of all allurements, he is not at all attracted. This is the actual criterion of detachment. So Maharaj Bharat, he had been a great king ruling the world. But he gave it up when he was a young man still. He gave up the throne, he left his family and went off to the Himalayas to renounce everything. He was so detached. So one can only remain detached if one has attachment for the lotus feet of Krishna. When we fix the mind on Krishna, then we can give up the material things. But without taking shelter of Krishna, then it is very, then it's not possible to give up the material things. So Maharaj Bharat is a nice example of detachment, right? So three qualities have been discussed in relation to Bhava Bhakti, or ecstatic love for Krishna. First of all, utilization of time. Don't waste time, right? Chanakya Pandit says, time is more valuable than gold. You can purchase gold, but you cannot purchase time. So one second lost, gone forever. So we have to use it very carefully. Then the second thing was, we have to be perseverant. Don't expect everything is going to happen at once. Just like this big temple here at Seprangjaya, it took many years of development. For many, many years we were building this temple. And even before the temple, 
came before this land, before this whole place, preaching was going on. So the devotees persevered. And then also detachment. If we are too much attached to sense gratification, then we cannot expect to get love for Krishna. We have to give up the material pleasure. If we are holding on to the material pleasures, then we will never become Krishna conscious. All right, we're going to go on now to Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhiraya Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki We are reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter Number 23, entitled Devahuti's Lamentation. This morning, text number 11. Tatreti Tatreti Krityam Upasiksya Yato Padesham Tatreti Krityam Upasiksya Yato Padesham Yenaisa Me Karshito Tiri Ramsa Yatma Sedieta te krita mano bhava darshitaya. Sedieta te krita mano bhava darshitaya. Dinastadisha bhavanam sadrisham vishiksha. Dinastadisha bhavanam sadrisham vishiksha. Tatreti krityam upasiksha yato padesham. Yenaisa me karshito tiraram sayatma. Sedieta te krita mano bavadarshitaya. Dinasta disha bavanam sadrisham vishikshva. Tatreti Krityam Upasiksha Yato Padesham Yenaisa Me Karshito Diraryam Sayatma Siddhyeta Te Krita Mano Bhavadarshitaya Dinasta disha bhavanam sadrisham vichakshva. Yenaisa me kasito diyam sayatma, yeta kritamana bhavadarshitaya, yeta kritamana bhavadarshitaya, yeta kritamana bhavadarshitaya, yeta kritamana bhavadarshitaya, yeta kritamana bhavadarshit
Tatra in that iti kritiyam what is necessary to be done upasiksha perform yata according to upadesham inst instruction in scripture yena by which Aisha, this, me, my, karshita, emaciated, atiram, shaya, due to intense passion not being satisfied, atma, body, siddhyeta, it may be rendered fit, te, for you, you. krita, excited, manabhava, Manabhava. By, emotion. by emotion, darshitaya, darshitaya. who am struck, dina, proud of, proud of. Oh, poor, poor. poor. tat, Therefore, Therefore, Isha, Isha O oh my dear Lord, oh my dear Lord Bhavanam, Bhavanam, house, house sadrisham, suitable, suitable vichakshva, vichakshva, please think of. Translation, Devahuri continued, My dear Lord, I am struck by excited emotion for you. Ooh. 
<laughs> Therefore, kindly make what arrangements must be made according to the scriptures, so that my skinny body, emaciated through unsatisfied passion, may be rendered fit for you. Also, my Lord, please think of a suitable house for this purpose. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Vedic literature are not only full of spiritual instruction, but are also instructive in how to prosecute material existence very nicely with the ultimate aim of spiritual perfection. Devahuti asked her husband, therefore, how to prepare herself for sex life according to the Vedic instructions. Sex life is especially meant for having good children. The circumstances for creating good children are mentioned in Kama Shastra, the scripture in which suitable arrangements are prescribed for factual, glorious sex life. Everything needed is mentioned in the scriptures. What sort of house and decorations there should be, what sort of dress the wife should have, how she should be decorated with ointments, scents and other attractive features, etc. With these requisites fulfilled, the husband will be attracted by her beauty and a favourable mental situation will be created. The mental situation at the time of sex life may then be transferred into the womb of the wife and good children can come out of that pregnancy. Here is a special reference to Devahuti's bodily feature. Because she had become skinny, she feared that her body might have no attraction for kardama. She wanted to be instructed how to improve her bodily condition in order to attract her husband. Sexual intercourse in which the husband is attracted to the wife is sure to produce a male child. But sexual intercourse based on attraction of the wife for the husband may produce a girl. That is mentioned in the Ayurveda. When the passion of the woman is greater, there is a chance of a girl being born. When the passion of the man is greater, then there is the possibility of a son. Devahuti wanted the passion of her husband to be increased by the arrangement mentioned in the Kama Shastra. She wanted him to instruct her in that way and she also requested that he arrange for a suitable house because the hermitage in which Kardama Muni was living was very simple and completely in the mode of goodness and there was less possibility of passions being aroused in his heart. Oma Jnana Timurandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we we explained most of this yesterday, Kardama Muni is a great yogi 
and he practiced brahmacharya for many thousands of years and the Lord had appeared to him and told him and that he was very pleased with him. He told him very soon a great, you know, a suitable qualified woman is going to come here and he should accept her as his wife. And so after some time Swayambhuva Manu came with his daughter Devahuti. Devahuti had heard about the glories of Kardama Muni from Narada Muni and he was, she was attracted and she wanted to marry him. So Swayambhuva Manu brought his daughter there to give his daughter away to Kardama Muni. Now Kardama Muni was a, a brahmachari. He was living in the, in the forest, doing austerities, practicing astanga yoga, meditation for a long time. He did not have an opulent house, but he was very spiritually qualified, right? Today women want to know, how much money have you got? Have you got a big house for me? I'm not going to live with your mother. Right? Things like this. You want to marry the girl, she'll want to know what kind of money are you making? What kind of car do you drive? Things like this. But Devahuti didn't think like that, you see. Devahuti was a different girl. Although she was born in a very noble family, a very wealthy family, she accepted Kardama Muni as her husband. And she went to live with him in the forest or in the jungle even. And he had a very simple home on the banks of a, a holy river or holy lake. And they were simply living there in the forest, eating whatever grows there in the forest, some fruits, some berries, some leaves. She didn't worry about the opulence. She was attracted by the purity, by the spiritual qualities of the man. So Kardama Muni was endowed with control of the senses. We said, you want, to, you want to get married? Before marriage, you first have to go and do austerity and purify your mind and senses. You can read in the sixth canto how Daksha had 10,000 sons and he sent them all to do austerity before marriage. Daksha, his job is to procreate the universe, to fill up the universe with living entities. So he is Daksha, he's very expert and he was able to produce 10,000 sons in the womb of his wife. And when the sons grew up, he wanted to get them married. So he told them, first you go and do austerity and when you come back we will arrange suitable qualified ladies to be your wives. And simil after 10,000 sons then Daksha produced another 1,000 sons and the same thing. He sent them to do austerity before marriage. You want to enter into family life? Qualification is, must be trained as brahmacharya. If you're not good brahmachari, then you cannot make a good householder. If one is not properly trained, the man has to be qualified, woman also has to be qualified. Man's qualification is brahmacharya, women's qualification is chastity. Women have to be chaste. Chaste means that they will also dress in a chaste manner. They cover the body, they don't reveal the body. Nowadays the young women, mini skirts, everything. They want to show everything to attract the lusty men. Prabhupada said, less intelligent women and lusty men. That's the nature of the modern civilization. But from Srimad Bhagavatam we read about a different civilization. We read about men of the caliber of Kardama Muni, 
and women like Devahuti. She is a woman and naturally women, have, the woman's body is meant to have children. So she had accepted Kadama Muni as her husband and for some time together they lived together in the forest doing austerity and meditation, practicing control of the mind and senses. The forest, live in the countryside, that is the place of goodness. You live in the city, the place of passion. We see everywhere in the city, everywhere in the city, people driving very fast. They want to drive very fast, big cars and so much traffic. But So city life is the mode of passion and then worse still is in the bar or the brothel or the casino, that is the place of ignorance. But the countryside, people who live in the countryside are more inclined to the mode of goodness. So Kardama Muni, his residence was in the forest, it was in the mode of pure goodness. There was no passion there. But his wife had come and his wife was anxious to have a child. And so in order to have a child, there has to be more the mode of passion. So she, this, this is all explained, Prabhupada is telling us, in the Shastra there are scriptures which instruct people how to stimulate the mode of passion. So suitable dressing, suitable residence, is required. Everything is there, scientifically explained. You want to have, produce a child, there has to be more passion aroused. And there are different things which stimulate passion. Of course, today people stimulate not passion but ignorance. They go and they get intoxicated, right? That's a mode of ignorance, not passion. They get intoxicated. So, Kardama Muni and Devahuti, they're very pure-hearted souls. They've been in the, mo in the mode of goodness. But in order to produce a, the child, there has to be some passion aroused. So, Devahuti is requesting her husband that you please arrange for these things. Means, living in the forest in a little thatched cottage that's not going to help to create the passion which is required. So Kardama Muni, for him it's not a problem because he's a great yogi. He can produce a mansion by his yoga powers. Today ordinary men have to work very hard to make money to satisfy the desires of the women, right? The woman wants passion, wants to have children. The man has to work hard, he has to go make money, try to bring money to make the big home, the, to satisfy the desires of the lady. But for Kadama Muni, it was different. He had yoga powers, yoga cities, and one of the yoga cities was he could produce a home, not, not an ordinary home, but this home could fly. It, was, it could fly through space and it could go to higher planets. Kardama Muni had these kind of powers. So he also arranged for Devahuti because her body had become very thin and skinny because she's living in the forest. 
you don't eat opulently when you live in the forest, right? You live in the city, you go to the supermarket and you purchase everything you want to eat, you eat all kinds of garbage food, but you live in the forest. Even today, there are places where people live in the forest. It's very much conducive for spiritual life. Generally, the ashrams and the great sages and yogis would all live in the forest. And they will eat what is available there. They will grow some simple things, some, some potato, some leaves, like this. They will just eat whatever is easily growing there. Some fruits, some flowers may also be there. They can all, these things can all be offered for the pleasure of the Lord. But you don't eat opulently. And when you're eating like that, then you don't have to worry about your weight. You see a lot of people today, they get so fat, and big, unhealthy, diabetic. Why all these diseases? These are opulent diseases. Overeating. They eat too much, there are no exercise, go everywhere in cars, never walk, right? This is a problem. People don't get proper food and they don't get proper exercise. And the result is they get bad health, poor health. In the past, People did not have so much problem, more and more problems coming because the lifestyle of the Kali Yuga is so unhealthy, unnatural. We're all so lazy, we're all misguided, we're conditioned souls. We eat garbage food, we don't grow our own vegetables. We don't produce our own rice and think we should be. Prabhupada wanted this very much, that we would produce our own food. I know His Holiness Bhakti Raghava Swami, when He comes, He tells His disciples, I only want to eat what you grow, right? If they didn't grow it, don't cook it for me. I just want to eat what you grow. That is healthy lifestyle. We want to encourage like this. You see this country, Malaysia, has so much nice land, such good climate. The whole year you can grow vegetables, you can produce nice foodstuffs. But people want to work in the factories. We're all attracted to money. We want more money. And to get more money, we go and work in the factories and we don't have time to produce the food, to grow nice vegetables and grains and so on, to, to offer to Krishna. And because we live this unnatural life, we suffer so much, so many diseases, cancer, diabetes, heart problem, all problems due to the opulent lifestyle, unhealthy, unnatural living. When we live naturally according to God's laws, we don't have to worry about these things. Prabhupada said, the poor people are better off than the rich people. The poor people, they don't eat so much. They're not eating all the opulent things, all the fancy things. They don't have the money. But the rich people, they're the ones overeating and no exercise. So they get all these diseases. So Devahuti, she'd been living with her husband in the forest. She'd become very thin, emaciated, right? When you, if you don't, you, you, you become unnaturally thin. 
So she knows that her physical condition will not be very attractive to her husband. But in order to produce the child, the husband should be attracted by the beauty of the wife. It's very important. So she asks her husband to make some arrangement for this. And Kardama Muni will read, as we go through this chapter, in future chapters, we will hear how Kardama Muni arranges for Devahuti to be rejuvenated. She takes bath in the lake, and in this lake there's so many ladies there, and they all take care of her, and they, they transform her body. You know, and the, her hair had all become matted with living in the jungle, so they, they, take, they make her hair very beautiful, and they comb it all out, and straight, make it all very nice and then put nice scents and perfumes on her body and everything and make her physically attractive. So in this way the passion is aroused, you see. Material society, materialistic society is always trying to stimulate the passion. You go in the airports, what are they selling? It's all passion and ignorance. This fragrant perfume for the body to increase the passion. And then there's the ignorance, alcohol. You know, the people, they go for these two things. You see, it's all perfumes and alcohol. One for the mode of passion and other for the mode of ignorance. Hardly you find anything in the mode of goodness. People don't know the value of the mode of goodness. But our Krishna consciousness movement is meant for promoting the mode of goodness. We're not, we know the nature of the mode of passion. Bhagavad Gita describes the result of the mode of passion is distress. It leads to distress. People don't want distress. But they want passion. They all, everywhere they, they promote passion. There was a, I was in the, the, the airport there at KL, and they have a big sign, come and taste the passion. <laughs> Malaysian food, very passionate, right? A lot of chili, yeah, it's passionate food. That's why People are suffering. And then feel, drive the car, feel the passion, get behind the wheel, you know, and the foot on the gas, and you feel the passion. Right? As you accelerate the new car, feel the passion. We're thinking, wow, great excitement, crash! Right? The car smashes and the boy is killed. That's what happens. Passion leads to distress, suffering. People want to avoid distress, they don't want to suffer. Then they should cultivate the mode of goodness. We should cultivate the mode of goodness. Eat food in the mode of goodness. Live according to the mode of goodness, the natural lifestyle. The mode of goodness brings happiness and knowledge. People don't want that. They, they think that kind of happiness. No, we want the other happiness. We want the, the maya suk, right? The illusory happiness. We want the ignorance. We don't want the knowledge. We want the avidya. We don't want the vidya. The people are very unfortunate in the Kali Yuga. They need to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. They need to be awakened to a higher purpose in life. People don't understand how to organize their life. So Krishna consciousness is meant for teaching people the value of cultivating the mode of goodness, living peacefully, and happily and naturally. 
in a pure atmosphere. But, of course, you want to have children. Naturally, women have their the nature. They will want a child. Married life is meant for children. Generally, every material world, every man needs a woman, and women need a man. And when they're together, there should be progeny. There should be a child. The woman will want to have the child. Other ladies will say, you're married? You have no child? What? Why is this? Yeah. And so th there's always pressure like that on the woman to have the child. Devahuti was living in the forest. There, were no, there was no other ladies there. But still, she wanted the child. So, she asked her husband, please arrange. You have to arrange suitable residence and suitable, you know, atmosphere so that we can have child. Prabhupada explains in the purport, when the woman is more attractive to the man, result is you get a, wo a girl. But when the man is more attracted to the woman, generally the result is you get the male. So, of course, people like to have boy. Generally, people, they want to have the, the son. They think the son better. You have a girl, at least in Vedic culture, you have a girl, then you have, have to give dowry. <laughs> in China, it's different. If you have the girl, you have to pay to get the girl. You have to pay money to the girl's family to get the girl to marry. But in India, they give money for the, for, to, to get the boy. You have to give the dowry. So different in different countries. In Africa also, you want to marry a woman in Africa, you have to pay to get the, the girl. You have to give money to the family, otherwise you won't get the girl. So different countries, different systems. Vedic culture, uh, supposed to, the girl was supposed to give dowry. Kardama Muni, however, he's a yogi, he didn't want any dowry. Swayam Bhuva Manu didn't have to give any dowry there. He just left his daughter there. Because he knows he's a yogi. Yogis have all the, he had all the powers, he didn't have anything he wanted. So Devahuti, anyway, she's asking Kardama Muni, please arrange. I want, need to have the house, need to have suitable dress, need to have suitable atmosphere to produce a child. We want good children, right? People don't know how to get good children. Well, just like in Western country, you know, they, 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 get, they have the child before the marriage. Pregnancy is already there before the marriage. And then they have to rush to get married. Oh, baby's coming soon. We have to get married quick. <laughs> you know, they have everything the wrong way around. Yeah. They don't know how to get good children. Good progeny comes by following the Vedic system. Different samskars are there. And the, the beginning is the Garbhadhan samskar. Nowadays we give great emphasis to Anaprashna. Anaprashna, ba baby's already six months old and they come and do Anaprashna. But the, first, the samskar is supposed to be done is the Garbhadhan samskar. At the time of conceiving the child, that's meant be, to be done in God consciousness, Krishna consciousness. So all of this is prescribed in the Shastra. Shastra guide us not only spiritually, but also materially. The knowledge how to make our life happy and successful materially. To have good children and a peaceful home. It's all possible when we follow the scriptures. Shastra. If we don't follow the Shastra, huh? Yashastra Vidimu Shrijya Varta Te Kamakarata Nasa Sedim Mavapnoti Nasukam Na Paramgatim. 
If we don't follow the scriptures, then you'll never be happy, you'll never be successful, you'll never, you'll never achieve the supreme destination. Shastra is our father and our mother. We have to be obedient. We have to follow scripture. Very important. Okay, any question? Any comment? Everyone agree? Yes, Mataji. Kripa Mataji. Yes. So, how can we help those people? You know, they want ignorance and passion. So, how can we help to bring that? Somehow, I feel as devotees, we're still not reaching out to enough people to come to devotional service. How do we balance that? How do we reach out to save people from passion and ignorance? They're very attached to the passion and ignorance. Of course, if they're very attached to passion and ignorance, then you we won't be able to reach out to them so easily. Generally, we're looking for people who are innocent and who are willing to hear. To get people to take an interest in Krishna consciousness, there has to be some interest, there has to be some willingness to hear. If people are really attached to their drinking and their gambling and their drugs and sex, then it's very difficult to try to save them. We're looking for the people who are a little more innocent and who are willing to hear, who are willing to inquire about the goal of life. So we try to encourage people like that, that life is meant for inquiry. We should ask, who am I? Why am I here? If people are thinking in this way, then it's a lot easier to bring them to Krishna consciousness. But if people are just simply intent on sense gratification, then it's very difficult. As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, there are four kinds of people who will never surrender to Him. Namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradama maya aparita jnanam asuram bhavamashrita. Right? Four classes of people. They, they, they're duskritina. They, didn't, they don't have the piety. So we have to somehow create some sukritini, some sukritina in them. We have to give them the chance to do some service for the Krishna Consciousness Movement. So that service, that qualifies them to take up Krishna Consciousness. If they will start to do some Sukriti, means somehow you get them to help us. Maybe, maybe you get them to donate something for the Krishna Consciousness Movement. You get them to even take prasadam. You get them to take a book, to read a book. Now, our Krishna consciousness movement is meant for giving that kind of sukritini, sukritina to people, to qualify them to become devotees. When we go for book distribution and when we get them to donate their hard-earned money for the service of Krishna, that is giving them the greatest benefit. And that is qualifying them to take more interest in the Krishna Consciousness Movement, to bring them into Krishna. Initially, nobody's qualified. We're all unqualified. But somehow we, we do some little service for Krishna. Somehow we become attracted by Krishna. Then we have a call. We, that can help us to, to get free of passion and ignorance. Come into the association of devotees. But we need that sukritina. We have to do, be willing to do some service. So we, we invite people, come, we need volunteers. Right? 
you go to a place, you have a program somewhere, put up a big sign, wanted, volunteers, we need help, please come help us, do some service. There are people willing to volunteer, to, to give some service. We should give them the opportunity. It can save them. It can bring them into Krishna consciousness. So, yeah, we need to always be thinking like that. How to give people more mercy. Give them the chance to do some service for Krishna. That is how we can reach out to them. The more we think how, how to engage people. We are having Rathiyatra in a few days. So Rathiyatra is reaching out, right? We are reaching out to people, bringing Lord Jagannath, putting on the Jagannath festival. We are reaching out to the public. And we want to encourage them, you know, come forward, take part. You know, this is, this temple is here for you. Come and take advantage. Come and help, do service. That is very important. Yeah, we want to reach out. We should, devotees should always be thinking how to reach out more. How to give the holy name, go around chanting, especially in this country, Malaysia, you can go around as a devotee, always have tea lag on, have your bead bag. I, I was sitting in the, in the Hong Kong airport, I just come from China, and I was in the Hong Kong airport, and I was sitting chanting, and this man came by and he said, Hare Krishna. I was very surprised, right in Hong Kong, you know, and it turned out, it turned out he was from Sebrang Jaya. <laughs> and, and he saw me sitting chanting and said, immediately said, Hare Krishna. So very nice, could meet him, have a relationship with him now. And he goes to Bangkok, so I gave him the dress of our center in Bangkok as well. He lives in and that turns out even that one of his sons is in Belgium and goes in Belgium and knows also Hare Krishna there in Belgium. So it's important, you know, don't hide being a devotee. You know, we want to expose ourselves. Let, our, let people see devotee. You're Malaysians. You have a right to practice Krishna consciousness. You can show yourself to people. Put on tilak, wear the neck beads, have your bead bag, like that. And, and reach out to people. Keep prasadam with you and distribute prasadam. Very nice. Have some, always have some kind of prasadam you can give to people. Then they will appreciate. Sometimes you meet people from Australia, they will say, have you got any prasadam? Because in Australia they always have a lot of nice prasadam. So we want to also develop that kind of relationship here. People can appreciate nice prasadam. Okay, Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gaur Premanande, Haribo.